Hello, I would like to speak about deep work. My name is Richard Bilderbeek, I'm a PhD at the University of Groningen and this is a, a talk I give, I will give tomorrow at my group. So I want to start with a shitty life. So some people suffer um, part of these symptoms. So one of the things they do and we may do is we have to fight temptations all day long. Like imagine a working day that you're constantly um, have to convince yourself to work instead of uh, watching cat pictures or checking um, fun things on the internet. It makes people tired. Uh, also when they get little work done they feel stressed. Uh, and also when they quit working and when they're at home. And some people, for example I'm a scientist, uh, you could work at home so um, then sometimes, sometimes you they come home and they think, all right, let's do a little bit more work because I was not productive enough, because they feel guilty. And also, when in the end they go to sleep, they can worry about, not again, not having uh, done enough and feeling stupid. So this is a, a syndrome of a, of a shitty life. And um, I had part of this up until I found uh, this book. It's called Deep Work by Cal Newport. He's a professor. Uh, not in psychology, but in um, informatics, I believe. And um, the goal of this talk is to tell you about uh, deep work and how to achieve it. And also getting rid of the, the shitty life. So let's get some uh, terms um, over with. So deep work is, this, this are, these are his definitions from uh, Cal Newport. Deep work are professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive abilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill and are hard to replicate. Right, so that's a definition of deep work when you're in the zone. Uh, some people call it like that. So the opposite of deep work is shallow work, which is non-cognitively demanding, logistical style tasks often performed while distracted. These efforts tend to not create much new value in the world and are easy to replicate. Uh, imagine um, a, a Twitter post or emails. Like not all of them are can be are shallow, but like like just response, uh, simple responses. And also, like if I would be the author of a book about deep work, I would also put in uh, a hypothesis that makes my work uh, sound very important. So his um, hypothesis is. Um, the ability to perform deep work is becoming increasingly rare at exactly the same time it is becoming increasingly valuable in our economy. As a consequence, the few who cultivate a skill and then make it the core of their working life will thrive. Alright, that's a, that's a cool hypothesis to write down as a book author. Uh, but I have to, like I started the talk with the shitty life. Um, the hypothesis is that your life will improve. Uh, spoiler, I do if uh, I know that for myself and some people around me that it does give them uh, that they will thrive. So let's um, get started. So the book, uh, the book has four, um, two parts, and the last part is about rules, and those are four chapters. And I think this table nicely summarizes them. Uh, so. So two about them are, are things about that have much value and little value, and half of the things about work, and the other things about free time. And with free time, I don't mean only the spare time, but also the the moment you're the time you're not working. All right. So um, so imagine what will be on the, the question marks here. Uh, well, to give it away. So he says there's a chapter uh, work deeply, which is much value while working. Um, drain the shallows, because shallow work has little value. Embrace boredom. Um, it means that when you're not working and being bored, I will just define this in the next slide, that also has a lot of value. But when you're in your free time doing social media, like he, the, the, the title is um, Quit Social Media, it, social media has usually little value. Uh, and it, it hurts our free time. Actually, the ability to work deeply uh, is hurt by this. Also, with social media, he includes um, like internet activities like um, uh, cat pictures or um, like random 
uh, going from from over randomly going over the internet like Reddit, for example. All right, so um, let's take a look at the, yeah. So this is boredom. So th this is uh, he doesn't define what boredom is, but this is my favorite part of it. If every moment of potential boredom in your life is relieved with a quick glance at your smartphone, then your brain has likely been rewired to a point where it's not ready for deep work. Uh, so that's why. So the title, one of the book titles, chapters is "Embrace Boredom." Uh, because also he says they, those are people who multitask all the times, are pretty much mental wrecks. So you should embrace boredom, not always uh, go into this this quick fix of excitement. Uh, because it rewires your brain to a point where it's not ready for deep work anymore. So let's take a, take a look at a typical uh, deep working day. And we start from the, the beginning. So this is a day. I this is just something average. It's not my my favorite day. But let's say you wake up at seven, you go to sleep at ten. Um, then this is not, of course, a, a, a fully planned day because we work. And uh, so here we have um, a naive working day, in which we first are free. The F means free. From nine to thirteen, we work. Then half an hour of lunch, we're free again. Then we work for four more hours, and then we're free. So this is a bit of a of a naive planning. Like, of course, you start with there. Uh, but what is already done, you should finish your work at 5:30, because after 5:30, well, you don't get much done anymore, anyways, uh, because you can only focus for four hours a day at one task. Uh, so it will be shallower work you'll produce. So just quit at uh, 5:30. Um, you need to uh, so those four hours you need to plan plan them somewhere so so logically you put them like the bulk before lunch or the bulk after lunch uh, but not split them halfway but on the other hand that may work out fine for you as well also you need to quantify the depth of your work that means that you do there there will be some shallow work you need to do like making um, arranging r yeah, arranging things but also deep work, like for example, I'm a, I'm a scientist, so I need to write articles uh, and uh, program things. So I separate the things, for example, with programming, there are some tasks that are very hard, like for example, changing the architecture of, of code. So that's deep work. Um, so, but some parts are very easy to do, um, like getting an increase of code coverage. Um, yes, there's some grunt work, and, and that's shallow work, so I plan that at other times of the day. So if we then divide the day with deep work and shallow working hours, then let's say I plan deep work from here, lunch, deep work again, and then shallow work. <coughs> but also it's a good idea to, when you're doing deep work, to become hard to reach. You don't want to be disturbed, you, know, you want to be uninterrupted, you need to be able to think deeply for a long time. So it's a good idea to become hard to reach. So turn off your smartphone, uh, no pop-ups, all those things. Uh, uh, like make people not able to find you. Like hide, uh, sit in random places. Also, so ritualizing, that means that you do things um, like always in the same way. So you ritualize where to work and how long. And so where to work, that can simply be your office. And also how long will you work? So it's a good idea to have it um, like, like determined in some easy way you do it always the same. For example, my working days, every day exactly the same. And uh, that makes it easy. Um, also all the breaks, everything's all the same. So Also where I work, usually at home. So this is very easy. I don't need to make decisions there anymore. And that's the cool thing about uh, ritualization. I think the word is a bit weird. Uh, but we can only make a limited amount of decisions per day. And it makes us tired to make a lot of decisions. So, if the decisions don't help, if they're about stupid, like dull things, like where to work and how long, then you waste um, that that energy to to make the decisions about useful things. So, if you if you drain the shallows, if you get rid of the, the dumb decisions uh, beforehand, that that makes your day so much smoother and it flows by easily. Alright, so um, 
we have to partition it as well because what we didn't schedule yet is downtime. Uh, these are this is free. This is also free time. Uh, downtime aids insight. So this is so I schedule 45 minutes of work and then 15 minutes of spare time. I go um, outside usually have a walk and uh, still think about my work, uh, but also like a bit um, uh, a bit more a bit more free thinking. And that's very important because it helps you recharge. It makes you feel focused again, and you can continue all day. You can even continue longer if you want. Uh, you shouldn't do that for the same job, but you can definitely continue longer um, after your work has finished on something else. Also, it's a good idea to ritualize how you'll work once you start working. So when you work, uh, you'll be needing things. Um, like you put them always in the same place for example that you can easily find them um, so all things that you need are sh should be close by at the same spot also easy also how you'll support your work that means uh, how you will feed yourself and um, like your brain needs stuff uh, so how will you keep yourself your, your body happy when you work I, I also always do the same things here so, but still, a deep work day goes beyond that, because not only uh, we have deep work, downtime, deep work, etc. There's one thing that you should schedule every minute of your day. So here we see that this person gets up from 7 to 8.13, goes to work, 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 has a shutdown ritual, I'll discuss that in a bit, goes home, and here does four things can be a hobby and then also 15 minutes of downtime. So scheduling every minute of your day prevents you to uh, to unwire uh, your brain. So let's say you go at home and then you go start binge watching uh, what do you call it, Netflix series or, or going over YouTube or fr go from everywhere to everywhere that unwires uh, your brain in a bad way. You need to teach it to train it to 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 do what you want by not giving in to all temptation. So if you do internet entertainment, that's just fine, but just plan it and don't go over the border because it needs to be the brain needs to be trained to behave itself. Also, one thing that the author uh, recommends um, it's not my favorite part of, of his of his rules, but he says you should have a shutdown ritual. So if you end at the end of the day. So some people they um, they they start worrying uh, at night because they they need to do things uh, tomorrow. Well, a shutdown ritual is where you, for example, plan what you'll be doing tomorrow and uh, think ahead uh, a bit. So everything that you will worry about uh, at night in bed, you think you worry about it there and plan it somewhere in the next days or week. Uh, it makes help you sleep better. Uh, also, uh, then after that your work is done, and that's a very liberating feeling because from that moment on, you're free. And that's a, that's a that's a true free uh, uh, time then, and it feels so much different than working all out throughout the day a bit. So that's a deep work day. And the things that I've learned from the book is that I didn't know that I so we have only four hours of focus per day on one task so we can work focused on like on work one day uh, four hours one day uh, but after that we can do different things also for four hours per day but it, if it's completely different uh, yeah definitely you can do that like like when I program at work I can't program something else uh, in my spare time anymore I don't get the same depth anymore but they can do something completely different, like playing the piano for another four hours. Also, I learned that we only can make a limited amount of decisions per day. Um, that's why it's so, yeah, my day is very similar to the point of being dull. It's completely predictable what I'll be doing all day. Also, I learned that boredom, like doing nothing, is actually recharging. Uh, so instead of so it's a good thing. So sometimes I force myself to do nothing uh, to recharge. If I'm not up to uh, doing some deep work, I just take a take a I just take a walk until I feel um, feel yeah energetic enough to again do it. 
So I have some criticism about the book, but well, it's a popular scientific uh, fiction, so that's that, that, this is just obvious then. So it's only half scientific, uh, half scientific, uh, in the sense that, um, like the studies they eat the story definitely, and uh, I'm not unsure how how of if the studies cited are reproduced multiple times. Because in psychology we have a thing called the reproductive cri reproduction crisis, uh, so we don't know if all evidence, if all significant effects are really significant. Also, we use some anecdotal evidence, and um, yeah, well, but it's it's yeah, I understand it needs to be um, a popular scientific work, and it needs to read well. So, so this is not, it's just a feature. It's not a, it's not a bug. All right. Finally, so when I started def taking up this um, this way of working, I became four to infinitely times more productive. Uh, I say four times because before that, like before I started doing deep work, I was in my office for eight hours a day, watch at my screen, and uh, I was there. But actually really doing useful things that was only I think two hours out of those eight so I was there but it was not useful me being there so now I can easily work eight hours uh, in a concentrated way uh, also shallow work I can easily do it now also for out a eight hours a day easily but I say uh, here I use the word infinitely times more productive because now um, because I can I have retrained myself to focus deeply again I can now solve all problems instead of just the simplest ones so I can solve infinitely more problems now uh, so that's why I use uh, infinitely usually I use uh, the, the number 100 or something like that but uh, well infinitely works just as fine also I noticed that um, I started feeling work as something relaxing so working throughout the day that's just uh, just uh, close to a vacation it's uh, time, time flies by without being stressed and it, it's amazing how much uh, work you get done. So getting started, so the author, he's, um, he's also way ahead of me, uh, but he had some tips, so you should focus on the lead measures. So let's say you're, so the lead measures are the measures that you can, um, like the, the, the badges of success that you can measure today. So let's say I'm a scientist, so I can say that uh, I didn't write a paper today so it was a shitty day so that wouldn't that's not the lead measure I can say uh, because of course my one of my goals is to produce papers but if I didn't write a paper a day on a day um, it was not a wasted day at all I know pay to write a paper takes you like let's say a thousand hours well that's a lot but a, a lot of hours so if I invest eight hours a day on that I can say all right I did eight hours a day and that's that's a good thing to focus on how much hours did you concentrate um so so my um, yeah also make grand gestures that's a thing he he recommends so do something ruthless um just like like yeah, yeah do something don't mind so that he cites this guy he he noticed he could work well in a plane so he booked a plane flight from America to Tokyo and back and that's all he did and while flying for that long amount of time he got so much work done uh, so that's a grand gesture like be ruthless in, in getting uh, work done also don't work alone um, that I don't say that you should work together but have somebody um, to talk to to report to to create a cadence of uh, responsibility um, like tell people that you will have a deadline next week and you'll finish it and so on so my personal um, trick to get started was to, to set a goal so low you are sure to achieve it so my first deep work block was five minutes long because I was afraid I could not uh, be focused for more than five minutes so I planned my first block five minutes 15 minutes of break and that worked out well and then I used 10 and then 15 and so I worked up and it, took, it was very easy actually when you plan and um, you start planning your day it was easy to to get up to speed so actually so these are my wor personal words of wisdom they're on my whiteboard 
recipe for a great day and uh, so there's all the evidence of the like like there's a lot of wisdom from Cal Newport in it so I wake up at 6.45 I jump out of bed then I shower then I make tea or coffee I drink mostly tea I have breakfast I clean up my desk then I make a planning I follow up planning no email until 3 and never internet entertainment so that's a take took me I think a year and a half to, to achieve this nugget of wisdom so um, the good life that you may obtain is that you can keep temptations at bay like you, you you've trained your brain to, to to allow a bit of boredom you get much high quality work done your free time is really free you'll sleep well and you feel comfortable with yourself because you can't work harder and you are what you are in the end so are there any questions well because this is a YouTube video there won't be any questions so I wish you a very good day bye